Dr. Hayes, Dr. Hodnett, thank you. It's a privilege to be here. Uh, I've learned a lot, a lot that I can go back with. This is a good different group from I, I'm usually with, and I appreciate the opportunity. Um, I, I represent a group of, of different types of doctors. Uh, Dr. McCullough is a philosopher, someone I've worked with for going on 30 years this spring. Uh, we're a physician philosopher team, I believe the longest such association. Dr. Amos Grunbaum, who we're fortunate to have with us today, he's our director of obstetrics at Cornell. Uh, we work with two uh, pediatricians, Robert Brent, professor at uh, Jefferson in Philadelphia, and Malcolm Levine, a pediatric neurologist from Great Britain, and Birgit Arabin, a professor in Germany who's practiced for over a decade in Great Britain. We've presented two papers in the two leading obstetric um, journals, what we call the gray and the green journal. Um, we don't have time to go into this. I, I, just as I've learned from you, I encourage you to learn from what our group has written. Um, I'd rather go right forward and begin with what uh, we learned yesterday from Dr. Panis, Dr. Hamilton, and Dr. McDorman. The public is insufficiently educated in the importance of maintaining vital data. CDC birth data certificate are important when considering US births. I've listened carefully to the presentations yesterday and today, and one theme that's run through this, I think the best database we have today is CDC data. For example, I think what everyone refers to, the best database we have to show that uh, the birth rate is increasing is the CDC database. I want to use this database to address two questions. Are there differences between hospital and home births? Using APGAR scores and seizures is prognostic data for future outcome. If there are differences between hospital and home births, are they due to location or to attendance? What are their ethical implications for clinical practice and research? The charge that Dr. Hognick gave us. I put this up. We don't have time to go into the details. Dr. Hognick's tough. Uh, we're, we're under time constraint. I just want to emphasize uh, Dr. Grumberm and I have reviewed this. I, it's, it's a wonderful database that Dr. McDorman and uh, Dr. Hamilton have assembled. Uh, we looked at this carefully, over 16 million births we were able to look at. We honed this down to 14 million births because we decided to look at only term births uh, greater than 2,500 grams. And this included over 100,000 home births, and indeed 67,000 uh, of these were home births by midwives. Now, when we look at all home births, by a factor of three to one, there were increased depressed five-minute APGAR scores in home births relative to hospital births. But we've learned that it's better to look at midwife home births rather than all home births, because midwife home births is acceptable to accept as an intended home birth. When we look at that, it's a two-fold increase in depressed five-minute APGAR scores. When we parse this down to four to six-minute APGARs, this trend continues. It's a two-fold increase in depressed APGAR scores. We look to zero to three APGARs. Likewise, it's the same, a two-fold increase. Look what happens when we look at zero APGAR scores, stillbirths. 18-fold increase from midwives who delivered home. That's intended home births versus midwives in the hospital. So we're comparing apples to apples, an 18-fold increase. So two-fold increase for depressed APGAR scores, 18-fold increase for stillbirths. Now, it's interesting that we found differences compared to different groups of midwives. As you can see, the outcomes for, were different, whether it was certified midwives or other midwives. Both groups were different and depressed relative to in-hospital birth, supporting the thesis that 
location is what determines outcome, not who's determining this. When we look at seizures, it's even more dramatic different than the depressed APGAR scores. It was a five-fold increase in neonatal seizures in the term births, five-fold increase. Looking just another graph to show it another way, if you look at all of midwife births, this is about 6% of um, uh, occur at home, but 25% of the neonatal seizures that result from midwife births occur from home births. Now, the last two lines show this well. You can see whether we use stillbirths, depressed APGAR scores, or neonatal seizures as outcome variables, they're all significantly increased. I'll repeat, 18-fold increase for stillbirth, two-fold increase for depressed APGAR scores, five-fold increase for seizures, home birth relative to hospital birth. Now you may say, why is this important? Ideally, it would be better if we had long-term follow-up, but I congratulate Dr. McDormand, Dr. Brady, for the outcomes they have. It's a Herculean task to get this. And neonatal five-minute APGAR scores are very good parameters because what does it mean? It's associated with neurologic disability, death, cerebral palsy, respiratory distress, hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy. It's even been associated with childhood cancer. So this is a valuable outcome parameter. Not as valuable as longer follow-up, but still very valuable. Neonatal seizures, again, an important outcome variable associated with cerebral palsy, apoxic ischemic encephalopathy, uh, neurologic sequelae, morbidity, and neural developmental sequelae. So again, not long-term outcome. <coughs> Dr. McDormand's working on this but we're so grateful to her for the outcome parameter we have. We heard Dr. Gregory yesterday talk about risk with her excellent discussion, but risk assessment is imperfect. Please, I, I deal with risk assessment. My main research interest in medicine is ultrasound. If we look, and again, from the CDC database, about half of hospital births have at least one risk factor. Those who deliver at home, 15% had a risk factor. So it's working. They're able to sort out some risk, but I'd argue 15% is still too high. Now, this is important new data that has not been presented before. When we looked at average APGAR scores in the hospital versus midwife uh, home delivery, intention to deliver at home, the average APGAR score was higher with home birth. And we said, why is this happening? How could this be happening given the lower APGAR scores that I just reported, the twofold lower APGAR scores? And the reason for this is the dramatically increased number of five minute APGAR scores of 10 that occur from home births. If you look at this slide, this is shows very clearly in the hospital, whether it's a doctor or a midwife, the numbers are virtually identical, 3.72, 3.7. That's how often doctors or midwives assign an APGAR score of 10 at five minutes in the hospital. Notice that at home, it's for certified midwives, it's 40%. For non-certified midwives, it's over 50%. I suggest this be a research question. Either this is something very good is happening, or people are not assigning APGAR scores correctly. One of the themes of this meeting, we want to encourage collaboration and trust. The underpinnings of trust is respect. And the underpinnings of respect is truth. If indeed their misassignment of APGAR scores, because no one is watching, please, I know what goes on in the hospital. A lot of bad things go on in the hospital, but one good thing, there's always someone watching. At home, no one's watching. If people are fudging APGAR scores, this leads to mistrust, 
and is going to uh, greatly impair the collaboration that one of the goals of this conference is trying to bring. Home births as well as um, home births by midwives had significantly more stillbirths, five-minute APGAR scores, and higher seizure rates compared with hospital births. These were attributed to location. I want to emphasize, I truly believe, and the data truly shows, an obstetrician or a physician can deliver an infant no better than a midwife, maybe worse. It's due to the location. Hospital births prevents these outcomes. And I want to focus on this last bullet. All of these relative risk I just said, the twofold increase in low five minute APGAR scores, the five fold increase in seizures, and the 16 fold increase in stillbirths are understatements. Why is that? Because some, perhaps many, of the bad outcomes assigned to the hospital were those that were originally intended for home birth that were then transferred to the hospital and accounted for bad outcomes in the hospital group. We learned yesterday in the birthplace study among nalipers, 45% of nalipers were transferred. So any bad outcome was then transferred to the hospital group. So the, the relative risk I said are understatements. Ellen, you've got to give me two minutes to sum up. To, hmm? Okay, okay. I think, I, I believe ethics is worth two minutes. Can you give me two minutes, Ellen? You're cool. I'll defer to the group. I'll defer to the group. I'll, I'll move quickly. I'll move super quickly. You want me to finish? I'll finish. I'll finish. OK. I know you want me to finish. Physicians and other healthcare professionals should discourage home birth based on the evidence. There is no obligation to offer home birth. We heard from Dr. Bingham yesterday about the problems that occur when transfer occurs in the hospital. I assure you, this does not occur in my department. Competent and compassionate care must be provided to women who are transferred to the hospital. And indeed, that is the clinical and ethical standard of care. And indeed, hospitals and healthcare professionals should ensure the safety of hospital births and consider creating alternative birthing environment. Let's move very quickly. It's very possible to do this. I put this forward not for self-promotion, but our results at Cornell show that there can be dramatic improvements in safety. Ben Sachs pioneered these concepts over a decade ago at Beth Israel. We elaborated on these and had dramatic results in improvement in patient safety professional liability expense, and concomitant with this, decrease in invasive procedures, a dramatic reduction in cesarean section rate. And concomitant with this, we worked hard to improve some of the aspects. I learned new things at this meeting and that Dr. Hognett uh, showed were very efficacious to have alternative birthing centers. We learned from, I believe, Dr. Sternberg about decreasing noise. I'm very proud this picture shows we're not just interested in decreasing infection, but by decreasing noise as well. Okay, I defer. Well, I told you it would be a provocative session. Uh, just one correction, I know you didn't mean this, but. I didn't pose those research questions to you about home birth. Just you, you made a little allusion. I want to make sure everybody understands that. OK, our next speaker is uh, Karen Pallot. She is clinical manager of the Family Health and Birth Center here in Washington, DC. She's a certified nurse midwife. Uh, she spent nearly 20 years as a labor and delivery nurse and has been a CNM for seven. And she's the mother of six. I think it's pretty impressive. 